Let's discuss how to set up your MUTO printer with Flexi. Here's a short list of what we're going to do in the next few moments. We're going to open up Production Manager for the first time and show you what you need to do to add your printer. We're going to find and download some printer profiles. We're going to set up job uh, default job properties and then we're going to open up Flexi and create a test file, show you a little bit about color management and send that file to your printer. I think you'll enjoy it. Now you want to do a couple of things on your printer. Just go to your printer and press the menu button and then use the right arrow until it says setup on the top. Now you want to use the up arrow on the, the control panel on your printer until you get to IP address. Finally, when you get there, you want to press enter and you're going to see the actual uh, numbers. These, this is called an IP address. It's how your printer communicates with production managers. So write those numbers down. You'll need them later. Once you're finished, just uh, press menu again and you'll go by, right back to ready to print. All right, when you first start Production Manager, you should see a menu that looks uh, similar to the one you see here. There's a way to choose a device. Yours is a color printer, so you choose color printers. Then go down to the brand name. In your case, it's going to be a MUTO. So we're going to choose MUTO. And then the model number. Be sure you get the model number exactly right. And, uh, our example, we're actually going to use a 1638X, so I want to make sure that I choose exactly that model. Click Next, and at this point it's asking how your printer is connected to your computer. So in this case you can do two things. If you're on a network and your uh, printer is being shared, then you can actually click Find Printer and it'll find the IP address. Uh, if not, uh, as we instructed you uh, previously, you, you should actually know the IP address. So just type that in at this point, and I'll type mine in here. And once you have that done, uh, it's a good idea to click on the test button here just to verify that you've connected properly to the device. So this, ju this just shows that you are actually communicating with your MUTO printer. Click OK and OK again and everything is set up. The name of the printer is right here at the top and you can hit finish and what it will do is it will uh, put a tab in your uh, production manager that shows the name of your printer here. So at this point go ahead and maximize your screen. You may want to pull a couple of these windows down like this to kind of even out the look. This is These are areas that we're going to talk about in a moment. This is the hold queue where your jobs are going to show up, a rip queue, where it's processing the job and then actually the names of the jobs that are actually processing. On the right hand side there's an area at the top that actually shows the uh, job and then at the bottom it gives information about the job. So that's how you set up your printer to begin with. Now let's find out how to use the cloud feature in Production Manager to download and install ICC profiles for your printer. As you'll see in the video that follows, you'll be able to download these profiles in zip format. So you'll want to unzip those somewhere, usually on the desktop, and then you can just simply move that folder into the ICC folder under the SAI production suite uh, file. You can just use your Windows File Manager to do this. The next thing you'll have to do is add the ICC profiles for your model of printer. To do that, we make it easy. Just go to the right-hand side of Pro uh, Production Manager and click on Printer Profiles. When you do that, it will take you through your internet browser to the place where all the profiles are located. So simply pick the uh, MUTO brand and then the model of printer that you have, just like this. Now you'll click the Download button and what will happen is it will download that file to a particular place on your hard drive. So in my case I've actually done this and on my desktop I can actually see here if I go scroll down I can see here's my my profiles right here for that particular printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go locate the SAI folder 
and SAI will have that folder under the pro, uh, program files menu in your Explorer. Go to SAI and then you're going to see a folder in there called ICC profile. This is where all your profiles are for your particular printer. Just move that uh, particular folder, just pick it up and move it and drop it right on that file right there. If there's uh, something already there, obviously you're going to replace it, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all those files right into that location there. And then what's going to happen is it's going to actually place that folder in here and these are all the profiles for your particular printer. Now once that's done, when you get back into your uh, production manager here, we're going to show you how important that is by setting up color management as well. Now that you've got your printer set up and your profile is downloaded, it's time to set default job properties and send a test print. The next thing we want to do is set up some default job properties uh, and then send a test print to your printer to make sure everything is functioning uh, properly. To access the default job properties, just highlight the tab for your printer right here, then go to Setup and choose Default Job Properties. That's going to bring up a window that has several tabs at the top. These are what you might call uh, just the defaults. These are uh, preset when you load up that particular printer, but you may have media in there, for instance, that you've loaded that's only maybe 54 inches or something like that. At this point, the uh, media size that it's expecting is 60, almost 64 inches, which is the width of that printer or this particular printer. Uh, right on the right hand side you'll see pole size. Just click on that once and what it will do is it'll measure the actual width of the uh, media that you have uh, set in your printer. That's a good thing to do to uh, make sure that it's not going to print uh, past the media. You can hit apply down here and that'll actually save that value. Uh, if you click the next tab over, this is a workflow. After you send a job in uh, Production Manager, it actually deletes it out of the whole queue down here. Uh, if you want to put it back on hold, you can just put hold on there and, and then what will happen is after your job finishes, it will just drop back into the whole queue again. Uh, sometimes that's a good idea, it just depends on your workflow. But the most important thing here are the next two tabs. One is color management and the other is printer op uh, options. So let's choose uh, color management here and what this is going to do is this actually loads and shows you these are all the pr uh, profiles that you loaded in the previous lesson there. So if you're going to use a particular kind of media pretty commonly, uh, what you might want to do is just pick out that media and save that as your default. Now you can always change medias and change these settings, but these are just uh, the settings that come up right away. It might save you a little bit of time there. Apply that and it'll save that as your default setting. Uh, and then the next tab over is your uh, printer options. So you want to click there. And, and here you'll want to get the help of uh, your manuals and so forth, but basically what this is, this is where the temperature settings are and other uh, settings for your particular printer. It's going to change printer by printer, but uh, you want to make sure these are set up properly for your particular uh, printer that you're using. Okay, so make sure you set those up uh, correctly and then just apply those. So here we go, we're, we're, we've set up some default settings. I'm not going to go through the rest because it's not needed in this particular uh, um, lesson. Let's click OK on that. And now we want to send a test print to the printer. So I'm going to go up to my uh, setup menu up here and there's actually a test print uh, that's right here. I'm going to click on that and what that's going to do is that's going to throw a job into Production Manager right here. This is a test job. Once it loads up you'll actually see a preview over here on the right and this is going to show you. See here's my uh, defaults that I set up a little earlier. And this is just to verify that the printer is communicating properly and that things are working properly. It's sort of like the, a, a way to make sure things are happening. Here's the test print. This is the image that's actually going to print. It's moved from the whole queue to the rip queue. So what's happening now, it's processing those RGB colors and uh, figuring out what kinds of inks to use, which cartridge to use, and so forth for printing. That's called ripping the file. Once that process finishes, it'll go to the print queue and it'll show that it's actually printing. So what should be happening on your printer at this point is you should be able to see it moving. Uh, it's going to move the media out a little bit and then it's going to print that test pattern that you just saw in the 
production manager. It'll just take a few seconds, but this shows that it's actually communicating and you're perfectly set now to actually send jobs to your new Moto printer. Let me show you how easy it is to add a MUTO cutter to Production Manager. Setting up your MUTO cutter is also very easy to do through Production Manager. So I have Production Manager loaded here. I'm going to go all the way to the left hand side here and add a device. It's going to bring up my setup right here and I'm going to choose Vinyl Cutters. Uh, we'll choose MUTO again as the manufacturer obviously. And then we have the names of all the cutters here. Just want to make sure again that you select exactly the cutter model that you have. So we're going to do this one and click Next. Again, it's uh, depending on how that cutter is set up. In our case, it is set up via USB port. It's actually going to show that right here. Just hit Finish. And what will happen is that cutter is now set up in your production manager. I can click on that uh, actual tab right there and then right click if I wanted to change the port if that was necessary for you to do you could actually do that I can also while that tab is highlighted go up to setup and choose to send a test cut so doing that what it will do is it will actually show you a little test cut and it will actually send that to my vinyl cutter finally it's time to send your first print to your MUTO printer from Flexi and Production Manager. Finally, you'll want to start your Flexi product. Just bring it up. This is the design area of your great product that's going to work together with Production Manager and your MUTO printer. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter what file you are going to print here. I'm going to open up a file that I have. I have a bunch of different files here. The, the idea is to try to find a file that uh, you can print that's uh, kind of a good test print. I try to find something that has um, you know some humans in it and maybe some uh, graphics in it and so forth. It just gives me a better chance to kind of check out whether my uh, skin tones are correct and so forth and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this particular graphic. You don't have to use this one. You can use any one that you want to print it out. But I like this one because it has skin tones and it's got some solid colors and so forth. Now one of the things you have to pay attention to when you print is something called color management. Uh, Flexi has the ability to do something called soft printing or soft proofing. Uh, there's a button up here at the top when you click on that it's actually soft proofing. It's showing you a preview of how this graphic's going to print. Well the way that works is through the edit menu under cutter color settings. You'll want to check this. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to set up a monitor profile. Now you can use sRGB if you have no other choice. We also have included for you a uh, generic monitor profile, which is what I'm going to choose right now. That better reflects uh, my, my little uh, laptop LCD monitor. Also, you'll want to change the profile here to the profile that you're actually going to use for printing. So this is the media that you're printing on. Uh, in my case, I'm using this uh, uh, Oracle uh, 3651 gray back to vinyl. That's what I'm using for printing, so I'm going to change it to that. Uh, for input profile, it's a good idea. You don't want to leave it on Adobe here. It's a generally a good practice to change that to an sRGB uh, capability, but it just simply gives you uh, better uh, color tones throughout your print, better reds, uh, better overall color printing. Let's click OK on that, and again, we'll do a soft proof, and you can see how that changes just a bit. You can see the it brightens up a little bit on the screen right here. That's perfectly fine. This is just a, a preview of what we're going to get when we print. Now to actually output the job we're going to go up here to the top and there's a small rip and print uh, icon. We're going to click on that and that's going to start up this little thing. It's like where is the printer connected? Is it on a network and so forth? Ours is connected directly to our computer so we're going to say OK there and it brings up the rip and print menu. Now I'm going to make this nice and big and I'm going to make my graphic a little bigger here again. This is very similar to what you found in Production Manager, poll size, right? You're going to poll the size here. This is my actual graphic that I'm getting ready to print here. You can change the size of this if you wanted to. It's only 10 inches right now. Uh, you can rotate it 
if you want to lay it on its side and not uh, use up all your vinyl, again, you can change all these things, right? So I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger here so we can see it a little bit later, maybe 18 inches or so. All right, that's number one. Number two, I'm going to go to the next tab, that's paneling. There's no need to work with paneling right now. We'll explain that in other lessons, and you should really investigate the full Flexi training DVD if you really want full training on this product. But the third tab is something we want to pay attention to. That's actually the color management setting. So once again, we're going to make sure we have the right output profile, which in this case, it is correct. We're going to click on color settings here and make sure that our assumed input source is an sRGB value. That's correct. That's normally what you do. This is a pretty standard practice. And we might check our driver options down here just to simply make sure that these are also uh, what is recommended by the MUTO manufacturer for your particular printer. Just to investigate that a little bit. If all of these settings are correct, then you can hit send right here. And what will happen is it's going to actually produce a file. You actually see it up here in the top corner. It says it's loading it up. You can close this now and go over to your production manager and you'll actually see that job arrive when you click on this file over here. So it's right here in, under loading. Once that loads up, you'll actually see the actual job itself and it's ripping just like we did earlier. And then it's gonna go to the print queue and start printing. So what's next? Practice. Try printing a few more of those prints until you really get the hang of color management and, and uh, printing it out to your printer. So you can actually get the mechanics of it down as well. Maybe change a few of the color management settings just to see what they do, especially maybe playing around a little bit with the input profile. Hey, it's just that easy with Flexi and Muto.